Hey guys, today we're going to talk about AR glasses and I have three glasses with me. I have the Xreal Air 2 Pro, I have the Rokid Max and I have the Vitcher 1XR. If you've been on my channel before, you will realize this is not my studio and my regular setup and that's because I'm traveling for a couple of weeks. I'm away from my studio and I was looking into AR glasses for two reasons. The first reason, I'm going to be on over half a dozen different flights and I was looking into a solution to be able to comfortably watch videos or movies on those planes and this is where AR glasses could come in handy. The second being as I'm away from my office and my desks and my large dual display monitors, which I kind of need for my work, I was also looking into AR glasses to see if I can find a way to be equally productive with virtual extended monitors. So I started looking into AR glasses. I did a ton of research. I read a lot about them and still I had a lot of questions unanswered. So I figured the best way is to buy all three, test them out myself and find which is the better one for my needs. And since I did exactly that, I thought of sharing those findings with you in case you're in a similar boat. So the review obviously is not sponsored. I paid for these glasses and here are my thoughts. Now this is not going to be an in-depth review of either of these glasses, but simply sharing my thoughts and comparing all three. If, however, there's interest in an in-depth review of these classes, do leave a comment in the comment section telling me which classes you'd like an in-depth review on and I'll try to make that review. Before we start, a quick note on what AR or augmented reality is and the difference between those and VR, just to set the scene and take care of any expectations you might have. So AR or augmented reality, glasses like these, simply overlay a digital image on the actual physical real world in front of you. Completely different from what VR or virtual reality goggles, the likes of the Apple Vision Pro that's going to be released soon, or the Meta Quest, VR blocks out the actual physical world in front of you and immerses you in a virtual world. Uh, in terms of the experience, obviously VR gives you a truly immersive experience, which is not the case with these, and we'll get to that in a bit. VR also can do a lot of different things, and there's a lot of processing power in VR goggles, and that's partly why they're so huge and clunky. There's no to very little processing power on these. So what, what these do, uh, as you can see, there are screens over here, and simply they project an image from whatever device, your phone or otherwise, is connected to these, in front of you, so uh, you'll see a projected image onto your real world. So in terms of immersiveness, although they advertise these glasses as having the ability to immerse you in a 200 inch or whatnot movie theater style screen, they're not as immersive as they are made out to be. And that's simply because when you put them on, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps in which light comes in, but also your peripheral vision is still going to see a lot of your actual world unless you're in a pitch dark room. So the immersiveness, although you do see a large projected screen similar to what you would see in a movie theater, it's not as immersive as it's made out to be and definitely nowhere near as immersive as what VR or virtual reality goggles can give you. So now let's look at what comes in the box. And with the Rokits, you get a plastic blackout cover, which you can put on the glasses so you can have complete darkness. Again, it's not gonna be complete darkness because light's still gonna come through from the top and bottom and sides of these glasses. The Vitchers do not come with the plastic cover. That is an optional purchase, however, so you can purchase that separately. But that's partly because it has electrochromic displays, so you can actually dim the display, and we'll get to that in a bit. The x -Reels Air 2 Pro also have electrochromic displays, but they also give you the blackout cover if you want complete and total darkness. The x Reels are also the only ones that come with lens inserts. So if you have nearsightedness or farsightedness, you can get prescription lenses fitted onto this template. With the other two glasses, you can also purchase this separately, but unfortunately they don't give it to you in the box. And that's partly because they have built-in diopters to correct for that vision. And we'll also get to that in a bit. Now let's talk about design and comfort, how they look. And my least favorite of the bunch are the Rokids. I don't really like how they look. You kind of look like Robocop while wearing them. 
uh, whereas with the other glasses, they look more like sunglasses. So this is what the x reels look like. They're much more like sunglasses than the Rokids. The same with the Vitchers. Now, in terms of comfort, I found the x reels are the most comfortable by far, followed by the Rokids, and in third place, the Vitchers, which are, in comparison, not as comfortable as the others. Now let's talk about the features, and before we get to the most important part, the screens, I wanna talk about two things. First, the diopters. As I said, if you have myopic vision, nearsightedness, the Vitchers and the Rokids come with diopters on top, which you can dial to adjust your nearsightedness. On the Vitchers, they go up to minus five. On the Rokids, up to minus six. Now, I do have nearsightedness, and I actually have minus six and a half in each eye. I thought with the Vitchers maxing out at minus five, they're not gonna be any good. I was wrong. If I dial it down to minus five, which is all the way to the end, I actually can see a clear image and I no longer need to wear contact lenses like I'm wearing right now. Now the Rokids can go up to minus six, which in theory is better for my eyes. However, I found when you dial them all the way to minus six, it kind of pushes the screen back. So it does create a kind of a black border on top, which is not very pleasant. So if you need to be towards the maximum end at those at minus six, it's not gonna be a very pleasant experience because it's gonna create that black border which is gonna affect the immersiveness and also um, how enjoyable the experience is. I also found that after watching some content for a long time with these dialed all the way to minus six, I did get some eye fatigue. So in case you're looking to get these, I would recommend you buy the optional prescription template and get prescription glasses or lenses fitted onto these. With the Vitchers all the way to minus five, I did not experience any eye fatigue and it wasn't very noticeable with that black bar caused by the screen being pushed back. One thing to note here, uh, these are stepless, so they're, they're not labeled. You cannot dial it to minus one, one and a half. It's just a, a dial that you continuously adjust until you get to the most comfortable screen or vision. Now, since I am towards the maximum end of that extreme, I just dialed them down all the way. If you are somewhere in between, it might be tricky for you to dial in the exact setting that is good for your eyes, so do keep that in mind. The other thing I wanna talk about is the electrochromic display, which is the ability to press a button and simply dim the display. The Vitchers come with that. The x Air 2 do not have it, but the Air 2 Pro, which cost about $50 more, and which are the unit that I have over here, do have that feature. Uh, the Rokids don't have it at all. And between the Vitchers and the x reels the x reels were exponentially better than the Vitchers with that feature. For starters, they have three different settings, zero, 35%, and 100%. 100% in theory being blocking out all light. In practice, it does not block out all light, but it does get dark enough. On the Vitchers, they only have two settings, zero in what I assume is 100%, but their 100% does not get nearly dark enough. It's still better than not having the feature, but compared to the x reels the x reels second setting, the 35% setting, is almost the same as the Vitcher's 100% setting, which makes the experience much better. I tried these out sitting in front of a window. It was not sunny, it was really overcast, but there was light coming in from the window. With the Rokids, it was impossible to watch anything without putting on that blackout cover. With the Vitchers dialed in at 100%, it was not a pleasurable experience. You can watch, but it wasn't a nice experience. With the X-Reels all the way to 100%, it was as if there was no window and it was very enjoyable. In the outdoors, the Vitchers at 100% were unusable. The X-Reels at 100% were pretty usable. Again, it's not gonna be uh, completely immersive or dark, but definitely usable. If you're considering the x -Real Air 2 or the Air 2 Pro, so paying another $50 just to get the electrochromic dimming, uh, is that worth it? I think it is. Yes, you can with the x reels put on the cover and get total darkness, but I find the ability to just press a button and cycle between 0, 35, and 100 uh, very useful, uh, especially if you're walking around the house or if you are on a plane, for example, and you just want some uh, visual awareness, just press a button and you can see through the glasses. Now let's talk about the screens. All three glasses have 1080p micro OLED displays, which you can see over here. 
However, there is a difference and that's in the FOV or field of view. The Witcher has a 43 degree field of view, the X-Reels have a 46 degree field of view, and the Rokids have a 50 degree field of view. Now where that matters is the size of the projected screen in front of you. The larger the FOV in degrees, the larger the screen that you see in front of you. Now, Witcher has the smallest FOV at 43, and you can instantly tell that the projected screen is way larger than that of the X-Reel, which has a 46 degree FOV, then going from the Witchers to the X-Reels. The Rokids do have the largest display, and it is larger than that of the X-Reels, but it's less noticeable. Matter of fact, when I first put on the Witchers, I thought the display size was okay. But then when I put the X-Reels on, I was blown away. The X-Reels had a noticeably larger display and it felt more immersive. I did not, however, feel the same effect going from the X-Reels to the Rokids. Now, I had to alternate between the two back-to-back -back multiple times to realize that, yes, indeed, the Rokids display is larger, but the effect was way less noticeable than the effect that I felt when I put the X-Reels after wearing the Witchers. So if you are looking for the absolute largest screen size, then the Rokids will give you that. However, in terms of the screen quality, the color production, the saturation, the X-Reels were my favorite. I felt the colors were the most accurate. It wasn't too saturated, it, it looked really nice. With the Witchers, on the other hand, it felt that the colors were a bit washed out. Overall, the entire image quality, I wasn't very happy with it. The color production wasn't as great as it was with the X-Reels. Uh, the blacks weren't as deep. The Rokids were slightly better than the Witchers, but still not as good, in my opinion, as the X-Reels. So if I factor in screen size, but accurate color production and the overall quality of the display, I would pick the X-Reels, followed by the Rokids, and in third place, the Witchers, which have the smallest screen size, but also the worst image quality. Now, I did notice with the Rokids around the edges, there was a little bit of image blur, I did not notice that with the X-Reels or with the Witchers. Another thing to note that the Witchers have a 60 Hz refresh rate, while the Rokids and the X-Reels have a 120 Hz refresh rate. In case you intend to use them for gaming, the higher refresh rate could potentially be better for you. Now let's talk about the apps and where you will find the most difference amongst the three. The Rokid, as far as I can tell, does not have any useful app. There is an app for Android. I tried to test it out, it was all in Chinese, and I couldn't figure out my way around it. The Ventures have an app for iOS only. Now what this app does, it creates some kind of virtual space for you, where you can have multiple windows open, a browser and other things. It only works on iOS, but also to be able to make the most out of the app and to have head tracking, you need an extra iPhone adapter, which is the XR adapter. And this is what's gonna enable the head tracking. Without it, I found the app almost useless. There's not much you can do. It looks good, but in terms of productivity, I found it only barely useful. The X-Reels, however, stand out of the bunch. There's a Nebula app that's only for Android and not for iOS. And as far as I can tell, X-Reels don't have any plans to develop one for iOS. Now the Nebula app also enables the AR space. You do not need an extra accessory to make it work. However, you do need a compatible Android phone and not a lot of Android phones are compatible. However, if you do have an Android phone that supports DeX mode, then that could be an excellent alternative. You can trigger DeX mode and you have something like a portable computer projected on the display, and then you can use the Android phone as a trackpad to control a mouse and just like you would on a computer. What you do not get, however, in DeX mode is three degrees of freedom, which could be an important thing. So essentially what three degrees of freedom is, it tracks movement along three axes, and what it allows you to do is fix the screen in space. So if you move your head up and down, the screen remains fixed in space. Now this is only three degrees of freedom. VR goggles have six degrees of freedom, which essentially track your head, but also movement. So with VR goggles, you can pin the screen in a particular space and get up and move and the screen will stay here. With three degrees of freedom, which is what AR glasses can do, you can only pin the screen, it stays in place when you move your head, but you cannot actually move out. Now the Rokids don't have any of that. With the Vitures, they say they have it built in, 
but it's enhanced by buying the neckband. And that's because the glasses themselves don't have enough computing power for proper three degrees of freedom. And which is why you need another device, be it a phone or separate hardware to do that computing. So uh, I found on the Vitures, uh, it was barely useful, the three degrees of freedom, at least without the neckband. And I do not have the neckband, so I cannot say how well it becomes with a neckband, but at least without it, I found it not useful at all. With the X-Reels, you can get this within the Nebula app if you have a compatible Android phone, but also there's very limited apps you can install in the Nebula space to make use of the three degrees of freedom. So if you use Dex mode, for example, there's no three degrees of freedom. Now I said this could be achieved with extra hardware and with the X-Reels, you can achieve it by getting something like this. And this is the beam, but we'll talk about this later. The other good thing about the X-Reels is that the Nebula app exists for Mac and potentially for Windows. So uh, there's a beta version for Windows that's barely usable, but hopefully in the future, we'll see a similar app for Windows. Today, there's an app on Mac and it actually works pretty well. And here is where the X-Reels stand out. That app allows you to create virtual screens or monitors. So you can have one, two, or three side-by-side -side virtual monitors when you connect your glasses to a MacBook. And herein lies the productivity aspect of things. If you are on the move and uh, would like to have multiple monitors, this is where the X-Reels shine. At least they're the only ones of the bunch that can give you that. Now in my testing, I found this a little bit less useful than I had hoped. And that's because the field of view is not wide enough, which means you cannot see both monitors at the same time. You need to move your head slightly uh, to see each monitor. Now the app does allow you to customize both the apparent distance of the screen from you, but also the size of the screen so you can actually zoom in and zoom out. But if you set it in a way where you can actually see both monitors at the same time, I found uh, you have to zoom out quite a bit. So the text on the screen, I wouldn't say you cannot read it, but I'd say it's not comfortable, um, at least for me, to have it at that level. So is it the golden solution for virtual monitors and productivity on the move? Unfortunately not. Is it better than not having anything? Definitely. Now, lastly, I want to briefly talk about the accessories you can purchase for these. For the Vitures, there's a neckband which has Android TV. So essentially, it gives you portable Android TV and you connect the glasses to the neckband, bypassing your phone, saving battery life, but also getting portable Android TV. The neckband also theoretically enhances the three degrees of freedom, but as I said, I did not have a chance to try it, so I cannot comment on that. With the Rokids, you can also buy the Rokid station, which again is a portable Android TV, but that's all it is. It gives you Android TV, but no other functionality like three degrees of freedom. With the X-Reels, you can buy this thing, which looks like an old iPod. This is the Beam. Now, this was initially created not as a media station, but to enable three degrees of freedom and to enable different modes. So it actually has three different modes. The first one is body anchor mode, and this is what the three degrees of freedom is. You simply pin the screen in midair, and it stays pinned there. The other mode is side view mode, and this shrinks the display to a very small screen, which you can put in either one of the four corners, which could be useful if you wanna be doing something else while still watching some movies. The third mode, which I think is the most useful, is the smooth follow. Essentially, without this mode and with all the glasses, as I said, the screen just follows your head motion. Wherever you move, the screen moves with you. If you are in a moving car or in an airplane or a train, this might give you some motion sickness and dizziness because the slightest head movement, the screen is gonna be jittery and move alongside you. Smooth follow smooths all that out. So here are my thoughts on AR glasses and specifically the three that I tested. My first reaction when I put them on, I was pleasantly surprised. The projected screen size was quite impressive. And I can see myself enjoying watching movies on these if I'm at a hotel or on the move or in a plane. In terms of watching content and media, I was pleasantly impressed. However, it's far less immersive than you would think. So if you want complete immersiveness while watching movies, look into VR goggles like the MetaQuest 3, for example. In terms of productivity, which was my second use case for these, I was less than impressed. I think there's a lot of potential with AR glasses, but we're not quite there yet. That's a great start. And between not having virtual monitors at all or the possibility of having a less than ideal but working solution, I'd probably go with that. 
but if you were thinking of buying these goggles primarily for productivity, I'm not gonna say uh, think again, but I will say uh, if you have the chance to try them out, try them out first to see if it's gonna work for you and you're gonna be productive with those virtual monitors or not. In my case, while traveling and on the move, and I do travel a lot, I probably will use them, but it's not gonna be that perfect experience. So that's my thoughts on AR glasses in general. Now on these three, uh, for me, there's a clear winner and that's the x -Reels, um, and they win by a long mile. The screen quality is great. The size of the display is great. The apps are great. They allow me to have virtual monitors while the others don't. The only thing they're missing, and I really wish they had that, is the built-in diopters. Now where the x -Real Air 2 Pro are the clear winner for me, um, the same cannot be said about the Beam. This is uh, too far away from being a good device. But again, if you're interested in a dedicated review on the Beam, do let me know in the comments section. My main issue, however, with these glasses is their price point. At $450, and potentially $570 if you buy the Beam. I think they're too expensive for what they have to offer. The technology does have a lot of potential, but I don't think it's there yet.